excuse me. Are you from the land layer? You're the new chambermaid. Let me see your references. returning to Paris in 20 minutes. Take it. But I haven't the money to get back to Paris. That's your business. Besides, a girl with your looks is a little bit too much. I'm sorry, sir, but it's not my fault. It's not my fault. I'll work for less, sir. I'll do anything. What else can I do? Come on, you. Just a moment. Are you Mr. Landlayer? I run the Landlayer establishment. I know what you are. You're the valet. Am I right? I am the valet, amongst other things. Nonsense. You're the valet and that's all. And don't put on airs with me. And you can just go and tell your master or mistress or whoever it is that you work for that because you didn't like the scullery maid that the chambermaid's quitting, too. That's all. You may go. Oh, you shouldn't have done it for me. I didn't. My, but you're brave. I wish I was brave like that. I wish I were, too. I, I've never talked like that before in my life. And stop crying, stupid. We can cry all the way back to Paris. Wait a minute. I changed my mind. Get in, both of you. Both of us? Oh! Oh, get my thing. He must be a very important man. He's a valet. Here, let me help you. No, 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 What's your name? Louise. And what's yours? Joseph. My name's Celestine, in case anybody's interested. I see. Are you sure he's only a valet? He's an undertaker. Listen, what I know about valets would fill my diary. For both of us? Yes. There's only one bed. Oh, that's all right. I'll sleep over there on the floor. Stop shrugging. Bring another bed. <laughs> you see? I don't ever want to see you shrug your shoulders again. Believe me, it You'll doesn't You'll never work. do it. It's what I've done all my life. You eat too much sugar. Are you clean? I'm sick of it. Yes. You don't know it, but you changed my whole life. When I saw the way you acted at the station, I understood what was wrong with me. All of a sudden, I understood. Life is life. From now on, I'm going to fight, and I'm going to fight hard, and I don't care who gets hurt, just so it's not me. Yes. And I'll tell you something else. I'm not going to be a chambermaid any longer. No, I'm not. I'm going to be a mistress and have a house of my own. Oh, excuse me. And I'm going to grab the first man I meet to get where I'm going. Yes, I am, the very first man. I don't care if he's handsome or ugly or young or old. Just so he's got money. That's the main thing, money. Yes. They 
They've always hurt me, so from now on, I swear to you, I'm going to use them. No more love for Celestine. I'm going to write that down so I'll never, never forget it. I hope you like to work. There's plenty of it here. Hard work keeps you out of mischief. What kind of mischief could you get into? Having six or seven gentlemen friends after me all at the same time, fighting over me. That's enough mischief for anybody, isn't it? Clean the sink. That'll keep you busy for a while. Eggs. New? Yes. Are you from the village? Do you have a good time there? You'll be seeing us the first afternoon we have off. What's your name? His name's Pierre. Run along now, we're busy. He's nice. Where's the other one? Celestine, she's coming. She get into mischief too? She's my closest friend. We get into mischief together. Oh, Mr. Lolaire. Did you have a good hunt, sir? I never have a good hunt. I don't like to kill. I never carry cartridges. Up. There's a good dog. I hunt to walk, to get away from this house. I have them hidden for you, Mr. Lolaire. Hot. Hey, is it good? <coughs> We're on the wrong way. <coughs> Would you like a nice bottle of cold cider to wash it down? Celestine, the new maid. What's that you're eating? I'm starving. Will you give me some? What do you do around here? I know, you're the gardener. My uh, heart. Say, what's this place like to work in? If I knew another one, I'd go to it. They let you wear a beard. That's about all. That Joseph's kind of bossy, isn't he? Well, he's not going to boss me around, I'll tell you that. That's his spirit. Nobody else is going to boss me around, either. I found out it pays to be very tough. Well, that may be all right for you, but I don't need to go with me. <laughs> well, you just stick with me and you'll be on the right track. We'll put the masters in their places. <laughs> 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 Sit down. Huh? Charles, what are you doing in the kitchen? I'm sorry, my dear. <laughs> Marianne, this is the last time I'll warn you not to feed Mr. Lanlaire between meals. You're the new scullery maid. Yes, madame. Your name? Louise, madame. That's very proper. And you're the chambermaid. Yes, madame. Your name, please. Celestine. That's too complicated. I'll call you Marie. Yes, ma... I prefer to be called by my own name, madame. Very interesting. Turn around, please. Turn around? That's what I said. Yes, I like your figure. We'll modify your clothes. Joseph, they'll help with the dinner tonight and retire immediately afterward. They will arrive at five o'clock in the morning and begin their duties. Now come to my room. I want to talk to you.
Joseph, who lives in these rooms here? They took no interest to you for the moment. I'll find out. You're not the only source of information in this house. I'm the most reliable. Is it haunted or something? No, but it will be. Oh. If you want to see something worthwhile, come with me. Now. Now. Aside from Madame, I am the only one who has the keys to this vault. is haunted. What's this, a torture chamber? Oh, my goodness. Oh, this must be worth a million. It's worth more than the chateau and the grounds put together. They are antiques, symbols of aristocracy. Do they use them every day? No, only once a year, on the midnight of July 14th. To celebrate our freedom. In this family, July 14th means the day of France's doom. This is gold. Don't they like the Republic? No, neither do I. The Republic was created for weaklings. I see, I see. Oh, look at this one. Oh, it's lovely. Oh, it's got rubies and diamonds on it. It's a snuff box. It's very valuable. Do you think they'd miss it? I'll go back to work. Ah. about yesterday. I should have known you were the master. Forgive me, please, and thank you so much for being nice. Don't go. You know you're a very pretty girl, very pretty. I hope you'll like it here. But with your help, I'll try, sir. Of course, it isn't like Paris, is it? It's quite different. I wish you had a gay time in Paris, didn't you? Mr. Lanlair, really? I'd like to bring a little of Paris here. I'd like a gay time myself. Perhaps, uh... We could go together to Paris sometime, couldn't we? Oh, you're just like all the other gentlemen. And I so thought that you'd be different. Celestine, please don't be angry. Will you do me the favor to buy yourself a little gift as a token of my esteem, Will you? Will you accept this franc? Uh, you're sweet, sir, but I can't take your money. I'd rather have uh, some sort of remembrance. Something that belongs to you, like an old snuff box, maybe. An old snuff box, like this? Yes, something I could feel had been close to you. The one with the rubies and the diamonds. Yes. Oh, for heaven's sake. Okay. Okay. You're breaking my class again. soldiers ready to serve a pretty woman as I was to serve my country. Well, Captain, if it isn't asking too much, why are you breaking our glass? Hmm? Tactics, my dear young lady, to get Landlair away so I can talk to you. Couldn't you talk to me if you were here? No, no, we're enemies, bitter enemies, the Landlairs and me. We're their reactionaries, and I'm a liberal. They criticized me publicly for eating at the same table with Rose. She's my servant. There's nothing wrong with eating with Rose, and I told them that. Well, I should say not. Yes, I told them. Excuse me. For heaven's sake. Delicious, delicious. <laughs> well, why do you eat them? I eat everything. I've eaten every kind of flower in this garden. Some of these are very delicious. 
some of them don't amount to so much. These are very bad. Well, that's very interesting, but here comes Mr. Lanlair with a shotgun. <laughs> no, I'm no coward. My diet proves that. You know, I'm famous. Famous over the entire district. I'm afraid of nothing. When anybody... Take off five property. Why, anything. Dead or alive, no matter what it is, you see. The first thing they do is to bring it to me and I... We never enter these rooms. However, since they may be occupied very shortly, we're going to clean them thoroughly today. Joseph, open the door, please. Louise, shine those shoes. Celestine, take those clothes and brush them carefully. I do hope the moths haven't got into them. Now, Joseph, come with me. I'll pick out the curtains you are to hang. I was thinking of you last night and today. I've been thinking of you too, sir. You know that snuff box. Oh, there's no hurry. You must forget that I even mentioned it. Not at all. It's just that it takes time, that's all. <laughs> oh, oh. oh, well, Celestine, are you getting accustomed to the place? I'm getting to like it very much indeed. Good. Well, you must excuse me. Joseph. Who do all those things belong to? What's the mystery? You'll find out in time. Don't be so curious. I don't know why I expected you to tell me anything. I tell you one thing. The master has nothing in his own name except his birth certificate. Not even a snuff box. You know an awful lot about me, don't you? Don't you? Yes. You'll learn I'm your friend. I doubt that. I was saying, when we were interrupted. I'm sorry, sir, but I have to do my work. I'm making plans about that snuff box. I think Madame works you too hard. Perhaps you will insist that Madame will give me more time off so that you and I can go to Paris together. Have I done something wrong, oh, Celestine? Not at all, not at all. Oh, come here. Come here, come out. Come out, wherever you are. Come out of your house and fight. Are you going to let him talk to you like that? Aren't you going to accept his challenge? Accept his challenge? Certainly I will, certainly! Mouché, wait for me! Aha, uh -huh. that's it, Hyde. That's, that's what you always do. Well, I that settles you. that. Why? He hasn't got a cent. Oh, now what are you going to do? <laughs> After all, the captain's not so bad. Jealousy! Come over to my house! Come over and visit a man! Oh. Man. Mm. Mm. Now, hurry up. Hurry up. Yes, Captain. You take too long. You'll never learn how to fix absence. I don't want to learn. It's bad for you. Just keep quiet. Hurry up. Captain! You! Captain! Tell us, see! You asked me to come to visit you, I Captain. I certainly did. I certainly did. My, what a distinguished-looking estate you have. Distinguished? You oh, think so? Definitely. See? But then you're a very distinguished type yourself. Try to see the roses. The lovely ones. <laughs> I thought you might have eaten them all by now. No, wait. I switched to water lilies. Oh! <laughs> Those fascinating things you 
beauty. That's right. You know, it's thrilling to meet a man of the world like you in this dull country stuff. No, I'm just an old village bumpkin. <laughs> Don't you believe him? No false modesty, Captain. <laughs> He's my baby boy, so Quiet, please. quiet. Would you like a drink? No, thank you. I would. Not too much, Captain. You run along, start dinner. Very well, baby. I will. I get on my baby's nerves lately. It's my asthma. But he couldn't get along without his mommy. Could you, Captain? You run along, I said. Very well, I'll go. But don't you get into any mischief. No mischief. No mischief. Don't get into mischief. <laughs> no mischief. <laughs> Listen to a puff, puff like a locomotive. What were we talking about? Your diet. That's right. Sit down, let me explain. Now, everybody in the world except me gets into a rut about food. They have no pioneering spirit. Part of the first man who ate an oyster, people called him crazy or eccentric. That's right. That's right. right. Now, the same with me. By my boldness, I've discovered new foods that nobody ever heard of before. I'm willing to eat absolutely anything. Keeps me young and vigorous. <laughs> you know, if you were in Paris, they'd write a book about you. You'd be a celebrity. No, I was in Paris. Nobody wrote about me. Oh, you just didn't know the right authors. Now, tell me more. Uh, eat stones, too? No, stones have no taste. You don't get the idea. Come here, let me show you. Come here. So I'll show you what I do with stone. Now watch this. See that? Now listen. <laughs> See what I do with stone? <laughs> You're the cleverest man I ever saw. Have a good time, anyway. Uh, uh, there. Oh, now, now I'll show you something else. This is clay bear. Let's get up there, clay bear. Oh. General clay bear. He's the best friend I have in the world. Darling, he looks like you. Thank you. <laughs> Does he eat everything, too? He doesn't eat as many things as I do. Oh, nice little clay bear. The land layers haven't got anything like you. And all they have is dogs. Anybody can have dogs but a tame squirrel. What do you think of that? Well, I, I think you're amazing. Look, miss, it tears my heart to see you working for those crazy people next door. They're maniacs, all of them. And the son, have you seen him yet? No, tell well, me about it. Well, he's a monster, a monster. He's got two heads and a tail. I wouldn't even eat him. <laughs> now, I'll get to the point like an old soldier. Come over with me in a nice, sane household. You can have everything you want and no work. Rose would do it all. Would you give me Clay Bear? Certainly, he's the dearest thing I have. I'll give him. And what else? Girls like lots of presents, you know. If you come with me, I'll give you everything, everything. What do you call everything? My house, my garden, everything. People would talk. Well, you let them. We'll get married. How's that for an it's idea? It's an idea, but I'll bet you're married already. No. You'll be the first one. And you tell you something else. Upstairs in my room, I have hidden away 25,000 francs. 25,000 francs? Yes, now, nobody knows about it, not even Rose. How's that for a present? You give it to me. Yes, I would. I give it to you. I give it to you. I give it to you. Stop it. Stop it! You're crushing him! Clayber. Clayber. You did that. I saw you. Now go back where you belong. Come, baby. Hello. that you like to see things killed. Not without a purpose. An orderly woman shouldn't become involved with a man like the captain. What can he offer you? 25,000 francs. 25,000 francs, that's what he can offer me. 25,000 francs? Yes! All my life I've waited on people, and now, now... And now? I'm gonna get what I can. That's up to you. But there are safe methods and unsafe ones. The death of that squirrel should be a warning to you. I don't know what you're talking about. Anyway, I'm not even interested. Someday you will be. And stop spying on me, you bad! Telegram for the long live. Is it from the sun? Government secret. Good news or bad? Depends on how you look at it. It's from the sun, all right. Then it's bad news. I hope so. Stingy old skin flints. Mary 
Dan, congratulations. Do you really like it? You have Joseph to thank for that. It's the way he kills them. Hmm? Yes, he sticks a long pin through their heads. In that way, they die very, very slowly, and the blood stays inside. It's what makes the gravy so rich. Oh, my pudding. A wire for Mr. and Madame Lanlaire. I take it. We didn't see you girls at our village the last couple of weeks. Don't you like us anymore? Here, take it. Now, hurry up. It shouldn't take you all day to get out of that thing. Yes. Now, slip into that as quickly as possible. It will fit. It will do beautifully. Very proper. Madame. I'll explain. I told you I was expecting a very particular guest. Mr. Lanlay and myself are not as young as we once were. We find that our friends don't wish to visit us as they used to. No, no, Celestine. The other way. Yes, that's it. Perhaps a fresh face or two in our home, yours and Louise's, although Louise's isn't much help, heaven knows, will make it a little more gay. So now you understand. Let me see. Ah, very proper. We can take it up with a needle here. We'll try these other dresses later. Madame, I... Oh, I almost forgot. You haven't any proper perfume, no, have you? No, well, I... That's good. Cheap perfume is unforgivable. Now, let me see. Ah, here's what I was looking for. Now, I want you to keep yourselves properly scented at all times. But a chambermaid. Is that the best you can do with your hair? I wear it plain for work. That's not proper. Sit down. Now, I want you to copy these exactly. By the time our guest arrives, I'll expect you to have your hair dressed according to these pictures. My darling boy, you're home. Everything we have is for you, George. Father, hello. I see that he never leaves me again, never. Madame Lanlaire would like you to enjoy a bottle of Veuve Clicquot 65, sir. Veuve Clicquot? Yes, sir. I've had it. Yes, sir. It's still in the bottle, sir. All right. Go ahead and serve it. Yes, sir. Come here against the light. Your hair's very nice. Where did you come from? Oh, I come from Brittany, sir. I was born in Odier, and where it's windy and foggy and rough, but I love it. Why, ever since I was a little girl, I've always... Oh, never mind, never mind. <coughs> I've had that story. You've had it? Oh, I beg pardon, sir. Then you don't want the champagne. Yes, I do. Yes, sir. How long have you been around here? Oh, a little over two weeks, sir. <gasps> I'm sorry, sir. Well, do I get the champagne? Yes, sir. You have a cold, sir. For about six years. I'm sorry, sir. 
That's all. Wait, what's your name? My name's Celestine. Not actually Celestine, is it? Yes, it is. Pretty fancy uniform you're wearing. Thank you, sir. It came from Paris. Did you bring it from Paris? Me, sir. Or did my mother? Your mother? Is she your mother? She is. And I'm the scapegoat of the Lana family. Hadn't you heard about me? Oh, Captain Mojé said that you had two heads and a... Well, for heaven's sake. <laughs> so the captain gave me a black mark, did he? Oh, the captain's talk means nothing, sir. I, uh, I've had it. That's right. Listen to him. You'll wind up eating beetles. Anything more, sir? More than beetles? I mean, anything more for you, sir. Like what, for instance? Well, I could read to you. I read aloud very well. Oh, that would be nice. Here. Wait a moment. Did they tell you to entertain me, too? Why? Never mind. I've had it. Very well, sir. I'll do. You'll do. Oh, I'm so excited. Celestine, come here. I want to talk to you. Why are you going? I'm going to the village. It's my day off. Why do you ask? It's not a good plan to be seen with Mr. George. I thought I was brought here to entertain him. Yes, but not in public. Neither Madame nor I would approve of that. Is that all you wanted to tell me? No, but I have patience. I can wait. <laughs> Hello, Celestine. Hello. Taking a walk? It's my day off. Oh, that's fine. There's <laughs> someone following you. Oh, Pierre. Where's Louise? She's working today. Oh, oh Louise and the, and the tree. What's he talking about? He wants to sit with her under the wishing tree. Wishing tree? The story goes that a prince sat there with a shepherdess, and she made a wish, and he up and married her. Just like that? So when young people want to get married, they sit there and wish. Does it work? Well, it did with me, blasted. <laughs> oh, good day, sir. Good day, sir. Hello, Celestine. Hello, Mr. George. I want you to meet my friends, uh, the postman and Pierre. Pleased to know you. Say something. I'm... Uh, tell me. He says he used to see you go by in the carriage. I used to see him playing in the field. <laughs> I remember the day you were born. Your father let me peek in at you. Well, I'm glad we've met formally at last. <laughs> well, goodbye, Celestine. Goodbye. Goodbye, and come back often, sir. I will. Goodbye, Celestine. Goodbye. <laughs> goodbye. Well, goodbye. Goodbye. Bye. <clears throat> I hope you didn't mind meeting my friends, sir. You no, know, I wanted to meet them before. I never knew how to go about it. Thanks to you, it was quite simple. Uh, you've been away so much, and of course... You mean it's the way I was brought up? I didn't mean that. It's so good to see you walking in the sunshine. You you seem to be getting better every day. I have you to thank for that, too, I suppose. Well, I'll be going along. Mr. George. You know why I came to the village this afternoon? Yes, it's your day off. I overheard you say you were coming here. You eavesdrop, do you? Always. <laughs> That's very frank of you. You had something to ask me? I wondered if I could go walking with you this afternoon, as usual. Well, as a matter of fact, I was just going somewhere to read. Let me read to you, please. Just one sentence. One sentence? Please. Go ahead. Here. I could a tale unfold whose lightest word would harrow up thy soul, freeze thy young blood. 
May cry two eyes like stars start from their spheres. I'll bet you thought I couldn't read. Well, I did. Why do you read such frightening things? Makes me feel better by comparison. I don't think it's good for you. I know a more soothing kind of poetry. I uh, composed it myself. Go ahead. Little flower, how I pine for the secret of your beauty. Oh, to keep my hands as soft as thine and still to do my duty. Is it so bad? Let's sit under the tree. That tree? Exactly. Tell me what it means, your poem. It means it, it's hard to keep your hands as soft as a flower when you work hard. Give me your hand. Are you making a wish? You know about that. I heard tell. That's why I brought you here. Are you making a wish? Celestine will be happy with someone someday. I'm wishing that you will, too. No, with me, it doesn't matter. Let's walk back to the chateau. Somebody's killing somebody. This is a funny house, isn't it, Celestine? That's just what I was writing in my diary. Not for children. <laughs> oh, I'm sorry. But do you write everything in there, even the unhappy things? I used to, because that's all there ever was to write about. What do you write now? I'm writing about Mr. Landlair and the captain next door. What about Joseph? I'll bet he's got a lot of money hidden away. He's an undertaker. Yes. Who's he mad at? I don't know. This is a place for murder. Celestine, don't talk like that. Maybe it'll be me, Louise. No, no! Maybe it'll be you. No, no! No, no! There's someone behind the door. Open it. No, you open it. I'll open it. Late. Madame doesn't approve of the help staying up until this hour. It wastes the candles. I'll burn all the candles I want and you stop sneaking around our door. Don't be afraid of me. You and I are alike. Hmm? Maybe not in looks, but down underneath we are the same. I'd like to make a little speech, a short speech. Will you listen to it? Of course, sir. Even if it were a long one. It's only four words. I'm going away. Oh, I didn't want to hear that kind of a speech. I didn't want to make it. But I can't stay here any longer. Wasn't the service satisfactory, sir? Mm. I mean, did we neglect you? No, on the contrary. I appreciate what you've done more than you know. Then why do you go? I've never been so happy before. I don't know, but since I am going away, will you do me a big favor? Sir, of course. Will you call me George? Oh, what will Madame Landlay say if she hears it? <laughs> I'd like to hear her. <laughs> Please, go away. I can't bear people when I feel like this. I 
I'm not feeble. I'm Celestine. And I'm here to serve you. It's my job, so let me do it. Your fingers are so cool. Are they, George? I'll tell you something I thought of just this moment. I don't know why it popped into my head. Tell me. I thought if I'd met you earlier, I could have waited on you and cared for you and served you. And things would be different than they are now. I think that's the saddest thing I ever heard. I thank you for telling me. I'd like to tell you something, Celestine. It's a sort of farewell. I've come home to what I call a home, beaten and disillusioned and ill. Come to a house I've never loved, to look upon fields I've never enjoyed, to breathe air that stifles me. It's been less than a homecoming, more of a defeat. Why do you tell me this? Because your name is Celestine. Your hair is gold. Because I'm leaving. Because you're bitter. I think that's the main reason. I can't understand why. You have money. You went to school. You studied law. Couldn't that have been exciting? It required both energy and ambition. I had neither. I never found the urge to live or die on a big scale. I remember when you first came into my room and I saw your hair. I thought it was the brightest gold I'd ever seen. Madame makes me do it up fancy this way. I don't like it. How do you like it? Just hanging loose on my shoulders. Of course you do. Now let it fall, just for a moment. Shall I? Goodbye. How does it feel to be in love? It changes all the time. Now it hurts. It hurts terribly because I don't understand. He almost kissed me and then he ran and locked himself in his room. I think he's mean to go away. Don't say that. He's not mean. He knows what's best, better than anybody. I just wish I could see him once again. The greenhouse is no place to say goodbye. I told him he knows what's best. I knew it. Who is it? It is I. Oh, hush. I saw your light, Celestine, so I knew that you were awake. Yes, Celestine. I'm very upset. I've heard my son pacing up and down in his room all through the night. I know he's unhappy and ill. I want you to help me. Of course, madame. I I think a cup of hot broth might be soothing to him. Would you like to get it? Certainly. I'll, I'll put on my uniform. Put my wrapper on. I think he wants to leave us. When he's so ill, I, I won't have it, I tell you. There. Who is it? It's me, Sir Celestine. What do you want? I brought you some hot broth, sir. I don't want it. You can take it back. Wait. Put it down. Celestine. Yes, George. Why do you come here this hour of the morning? What's the idea behind it? I was told that you couldn't sleep, sir, so we decided You were told? That... Who told you? I mean, Madame told me to... I knew it! I knew it! Come closer. Yes, George. I said goodbye to you today. Do you remember that? Well, didn't I make myself clear? You mean you never wanted to see me again? I meant a lot of things which I'll explain with a proper witness. Come in here. I want to talk to you. George. Mother. Inside here, a lot of secrets, fears, moods, not one particle of hope. I'm finished. Now, what do you want of me? What are you trying to do? I'm trying to get you to stay with me. I know that. You won't be sorry. I'll take care of you. You'll leave me alone. No, I'll watch over you as I've always done since you were a fragile little boy. Haven't I always protected you, sheltered you? Because you want to possess me as you possessed father and Joseph. George. Yes, and everyone else around here. Oh, you're tired, my son, and upset. Whatever I am, will you leave me alone? Is that asking too much? But, George... Now that you've won, get out. And take your fellow conspirator with you. You don't mean that. 
Take her out, I said. Keep her out of my sight. I've seen all I want of love. Now go away. <coughs> then you'll stay with me, my darling. You've changed your mind. My mind has nothing to do with it. I've tried to go, but I, I can't as much as I want to. I haven't the strength to crawl from here to the village. From here to the, to the front gate. Does that satisfy you? Of course you haven't the strength. Please, get out. Get out. Get out. My poor boy is not himself tonight, but he'll soon be having you wait on him again. No, he won't. What do you think I am, a dog or a cat or an animal or something, that you can send for me one minute and throw me out the next? Really? I hate him. I hate him for pretending to be nice to me when all the time he was just like you are, mean and cruel. Look at you! I'm glad I found out in time that you're both the same. And I hate you, too. I don't want to dress like you or look like you or be like you. I can't stand it here anymore. I'm through. I'm through. Here you are, Celeste. I'm not taking them. You can have them. But Madame Landler gave them to you. You can take them all and welcome. I don't ever want to see anything to remind me of this place. Oh, Celeste, they're beautiful. <laughs> Louis, stop crying. Here. <laughs> I'll close up my bag. The air in this place stifles me. I want to get out of here as fast as I can. Oh, Louise. Here, help me with this hook. I'll help you with the hook. Joseph, I want you to hitch up the carriage and take me to the station. Have you been dismissed by Madame? No, I haven't. Where do you want to go? I'm going back to Paris. There's no train until tomorrow morning. I know that. I'm going to wait in the station. Why are you leaving? Because I hate everybody in this house. Everybody? Yes, everybody. I hate them. Joseph, get me out of here, please. Please get me out. Celestine, I'm a patient man, and I waited patiently to talk to you. Just a minute. I found a little cafe in Sherbrooke. A year ago, I made the down payment, and every month I paid more money on it. Very soon, I will own it. How interesting. You listen to George, now listen to me. Sit down here. You know Sherbrooke? It's an interesting town. It's full of soldiers and sailors. They like a good time, they like to drink, and they like to look at a beautiful woman. With a place like that, I could make a fortune. But I need someone like you to run it with me. Aside from everything else, it's insulting. Insulting? I don't know what you mean. You sit behind the bar and count the money. You laugh and talk with the soldiers. They won't dare to insult you because everybody will know that you're my wife. Yes, Celestine, I, I'm going to marry you. I want you. I need you. I need you more than you can understand. You, you're in my brain and in my blood. Joseph, your eyes, they're bad. They frighten me. I'm afraid. You like Mr. George's eyes better, Don't huh? Don't speak to me about him ever. All right. But you and I, Celestine, we are the same. I don't want to be a servant any more than you do. You're a valet and you always will be. No, I won't. I tell you, we are like you and I. Maybe the worst of me is like you. I've tried to be good always, ever since I was a little girl. But every time I'd see a new face, a man's face, I'd look into his eyes to see what was behind them. And I never knew until it was too late. Until I'd been terribly, terribly hurt. I'm not trying to hurt you. I, I want to free you. Don't you see? Think of the cafe. You are going to be the mistress, your own mistress. You, you rule it like a queen. Madame is ringing for something. You better answer. I won't. 
I won't be humiliated again. A few more days and we'll be free. These people that have humiliated you, think of your revenge. You ride back here not as a servant, but as a mistress, in a carriage with two horses, with four horses. Will Madame Lanlaire humiliate you then? She'll bow to you and bite her lips with envy. It will never happen. Oh, yes, it will. I have a plan. Plans can get you into trouble. Not this one. I tell you, I've put too much time and effort into it. You see, for years, for ten years, I had the unpleasant job of working my way into Madame's good graces. Ten years of service, of devotion, until I had her confidence and the proper set of keys. Why did you do this? For one purpose, freedom. Today is the 14th of July. After the midnight banquet is over, the way is clear. You mean the silver? What I mean is my affair. I can't stay in this house. I'll meet you in Paris for sure. I'll let you go now. Joseph. Don't struggle. I want you. Joseph. We're alone now. All right, I'll stay. I'll give you one more day. Until tomorrow. If you're not ready by then, I'll go alone. I've been fooled for the last time. How much more, Joseph? You're about finished. I hope so. If I had my way, we'd use this stuff all the time or sell it or something. Would you, Charles? Careful, you'll dent that cruet. When are you leaving? Tomorrow, madame. Alone? I think so. Isn't the silver beautiful, Joseph? Always thought so, madame. Yes, I know. Did you hear, madame? They're beginning the celebration. They play the same old tunes every year. We're about finished with our work, madame. Could we go to the village for a while? Nobody leaves this house on the 14th of July. We don't approve of it. What do you mean by we? I've decided that this year everybody shall go for you, one hour. You mean all of us? No, not you. Go into the garden and pick some roses. Isn't it getting a bit dark go to anyway, pick roses? All of you. And now, Joseph, give me the keys to the vault. The keys? Yes. Celestine? After ten years, I demand an explanation. It has come over me recently that perhaps I've done you an injustice by placing temptation in your way. I shudder to think how easy it would have been for you to have entered the vault any time you wished, knowing the theft would not be discovered until the following year. Yes, I've really done you a great injustice. Having been your confidential steward for so long, this hurts me very deeply. I understand, Joseph. Now give me the keys. You want all the keys to all the rooms? Now carry that silver to the dining room. You'll always be a valet, Joseph. What is it, Joseph? Did she take the keys? Doesn't matter. One more day and I leave alone. Things will work out. You will come with me. All right. But get the money first. Celestine, Celestine. Come on, we've only got an hour. Are you coming with us? No. Run along. But it's no fun alone. Who'll buy me things? Why not take Captain Moje? Moje? Are you serious? Yes, he'll buy you things and it'll keep him amused for a while. All right. I will. Goodbye. 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 Celestine, you're off for the celebration? Oh, naturally. Would you like to be our escort? Naturally. <laughs> Come on. Where are you going? 
I'm all dressed up. Wait for me, Captain. Wait for me. All right, go on to the village. I'll meet you in the square. Be sure. Yes, next. Come on. <laughs> Where are you going, my little sugar bun? Why, to the celebrations with you, Captain. In that case, let's go this way. Let's go this way. Did you forget something, Captain? Yes, I did. Oh, my little honey oh, 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 I forgot my money. I want to be sure and, and give you a good time. Come on, little sugar bun. Let's go. Do this. No, no, no. I'm going to play a little game. What's your little game? No. Come on. Down in the shower. Play a little game. Oh, what kind of a game? Isolating the enemy. Military strategy. You're after that Celestine. That yes, you couldn't get better if you were Kegley or Strong. Celestine and me would go to Paris together and get married. In a cathedral. 
don't say that. Only weak people sit around under trees wishing for things. It's better to do it yourself. You're right, no wishes. There's a train in a few hours. We'll take it. How's that for an idea? We'll go to Paris. Yes, you wait here. I'll run home and get some money. I'm a man of action. What are you? the next march to you, Miss Celestine. La Belle Parisienne. That's very sweet of you. Now, everybody, La Belle Parisienne. <laughs> I'm going to do something I've never done before. The Lanlaires don't like us, and we don't like them. But tonight, we're going to march and play our music right under their very window. <laughs> in honor of you, Celestine. Now, don't forget to listen. Well, don't forget to come. <laughs> Bye, everybody. Bye. Wait, 
Jay was darling. He bought us everything. Let's get in already. It's late. What have you been doing? Digging for treasure? He's funny, isn't he? Like an undertaker. Now let's go to the long airs and pray for Celestine. Everybody! One! <laughs> Another woman murdered in Paris. Another woman cut to pieces. Charles. Yes, dear? Here you are, Mary. Everybody's so late, our dinner will be ruined. Here's the salad. All right. Everybody into the dining room. What do we do there? We drink a toast. We do it every year. I have some news for you. You gave me one more day to leave for Cherbourg. I'm ready to go. You got the silver. I've got the money. How? That needn't concern you. My captain! Where's my captain? Where's my baby boy? What have you done with him? Where is he? No, you're hurting Where is he? I he don't broke know. open his locker. He took his money and ran away. I don't know what you're talking Where's about. Where is my hysterical? You know. She let him out. She tricked him. He did it for you. He told me so. Oh, Mr. Bethenna, go look for him. He's drunk somewhere. But no, he isn't. You've hit him somewhere. She stole my baby. Get off the property. Oh, my baby. Captain. Captain, my baby. Where are you? Where is he? Joseph. Joseph. Listen. You were in Moshe's garden. You killed him for the money. We killed him. You were in a hurry for the cafe. We are in this together. No, I... Be quiet. Come on. Open the door. Get in. Joseph, serve the wine, please. Mm. That music sounds louder than usual. Question I've been wanting to ask your mother. Yes? How are we going to end the Republic just by closing the shutter once a year and celebrating with this confounded silver? It isn't a celebration, it's a funeral for ourselves and everyone like us. Well, that's the question I've always wanted to ask your mother. Is death to the Republic? To you, George. If you should ever leave me again, I don't think I could go on living. Death to the Republic. Madame, I am taking this occasion to make an announcement. I have served you faithfully for ten years. Ten years, three months, and three days, to be exact. But, like so many other people of my class, I always had the ambition that one day I'd be my own master. That day has come. I have, through the years, saved and invested my money carefully until I was able to buy a little business. I thought you'd be glad to hear about it. You mean you're leaving? Yes, sir. 
Well, well, that's too bad. <laughs> How soon will you go? Right away. Tonight. We're leaving tonight. Perhaps I should also announce that I am going to be married. I found myself a wife. Celestine. Yes, Celestine. You're a liar. Get out of this room. George, please. He's a liar and a fool! I'm sorry, I didn't mean to lose my temper, but just for a moment, I took you seriously. It's true, he's not lying. I don't believe you. Joseph, I gave you a chance to get out gracefully. Take advantage don't of it. Don't say any more. I'm sorry you don't believe it. Celestine loves me, and we are going away together. Take me away now. I congratulate you. I'm happy, very happy. Let's all drink a toast to Celestine's future. But first, let me see you kiss him. We are not used to kissing in public, Mr. George. Not in public. Are you ashamed? You shouldn't be ashamed of love. You should be proud. Take him in your arms. Hold him. Kiss him. Embrace him. <laughs> Celestine. Celestine. George, where are you going? Flying to the moon. That creature cares nothing for you. If she pretended to, it was my orders. She's a servant. She belongs with a servant. Let her go with Joseph. That's it. That's what I like to hear. You and I are liars, parasites, thieves. That's as it should be. But she's a servant. She has no feelings, no morals, no rights, nothing. You're my son. That's just what I'm trying to forget. What did you say? I said hooray for my son. Let the music come in. Let me free. Oh, for the shackles. Let me move on. Hooray for my son. Hooray for the revolution. You miserable fool. Sit down. Joseph, close those shutters. Before you go, I want you to do one thing for me. What is it, madame? My son is bewitched by that creature. When I brought her here, I didn't bargain for this. His infatuation is complete. He'll go away with her and never return. I want you to take her with you. It will take a certain price, madame. A price from me? Yes. What is it? The silverware. Ah, oh, you're as insane as the rest of them. Very well, madame. Good night. Joseph, you know what this silver means to me. That's exactly why I want it. To hurt me? No. I must have it as you had it for my peace of mind. It represents to me as it has to you, my new position in life, my new security. I'll give you one piece. I'll, I'll give you this. I want all of them. No, I... I'll I, I divide it with you. I'll give you half. All of it. Now leave me my candelabra. And this. And this. All of it, madame, and you'd better decide quick. All of it. All right. Take it all. Take it. Take that. Why do you come here? Why? I must. I love you, Celestine. But you told me to get out, that you never want to see me again. I was wrong. Forgive me. Will you forgive me? It's too late. It's too late. I have to make you understand that. You mean about Joseph? Please believe me, George. You mean about Joseph? Yes, because of Joseph! You don't love him. You showed me that. I love you, George. I think I've loved you all my life. But I can't be with you. I know why. Because I'm ill. You think I'm dying? Don't say that. It's cruel. It's true. I knew it from the beginning. That's why I tried to leave you. I understood you were afraid. Afraid? It's yes, afraid of me, of my lips, afraid to kiss me. That's not true, it's George. True. It isn't. Come here. You see, it's not true. Oh, I, I wish there were no other place but right here. No other time but now. My dearest. My dearest. Why do you cry? Why are you crying? Because I... I love you so.
harm, Mr. George. Not if you come with me. Touch him again, I'll kill you. Did I start it? Come on. Keep away! Keep away! Keep away! Keep away! Keep away! Coming with me now, or do I have to kill him too? Your luggage is in the carriage. Everything is prepared. Look. The silver. It's ours now, all of it. You'll eat from it like a queen. And here. Strange thing about me, Joseph. Here I am again. The more I'm beaten, the stronger I get. You think I'd be finished, wouldn't you? Well, I'm not. <laughs>
All right, fellas, take it. Now, I want you to write something on the last page. Forsaking all others. Through sickness and health. For better or for worse. Till death do us part. <laughs> 